Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be implementing a player. So, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a new class called Player, and there we go. So I'm going to be a public player. It's going to have some vector 3f position, and that's just about all I care about, so I'm going to leave it at that. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to have my player have some private camera camera. And since this is a first-person shooter, that's essentially going to be my player. The player is going to essentially be the camera. But, so, what I'm going to do, say camera equals new camera, taking in whatever the position is. Which it should have. Okay, I guess not. So let's add that to our new giant list of things we need. We need more friendly constructors. Because, come on, I shouldn't have to specify all parameters, just to specify a position for the camera. So, new vector 2, 3f, yes, 0, 1, 0, and new vector 3f, 0, 0, 1. Because that's the proper parameters, right? Yes, wait. No. Okay, forward should be this way, up should be this. Okay, now it's the appropriate parameters. And there we go. So now, just like level, I'm going to have some public void input, public void update, and public void render. Huh. I don't know about you, but that, that sort of input update render thing looks a little familiar to me. But oh well. So let's go ahead and do input. I'm not just going to do camera.input because I want a little bit more control over it. In fact, I really don't think the camera should have an input. This is really a temporary thing, so I am going to copy and paste this. But yeah, this should be an implementation thing. Maybe I could have some camera called free moving camera that sort of extends this and has that input thing, but yeah. Point is. Cameras really shouldn't have all this data associated with it, so, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to copy the camera's data and move it in here. So, I'm going to have some private boolean and some private vector2f center position. Hmm. You know, it kind of makes sense that center position would be some part of the window, so let's go ahead and add that node. So, windows should have more properties such as maybe, I don't know, center position, and maybe full screen. You know, things like that. Those would be kind of nice. And, you know, maybe mouse locking, maybe that should go in input, but so I'll put that as maybe, but yeah. Anyways, now that we got all that, let's see. Move. I actually don't want to move like this. Well, I'll do it for now, but I really don't want to keep moving like that, if that makes any sense. So, I'm going to move it with camera dot get forward. I'm just going to do, essentially just put camera dot in front of it, but you'll see why very shortly. So there's our input. Camera dot rotate x, camera dot rotate y, and that should be doing exactly the same thing. So now I should be able to completely get rid of this, and instead have maybe a player. And maybe the level should have the player, but right now I'm just going to put it in game. So a player is a new player taking in new vector three f zero zero zero. And here player dot input. You know I should just do that for everything. So level.input, player.input, no, level.update, player.update, and, you know, player.render. So, there. And now, if I run, I... it's not working. And why is that? Because I never set the camera to the player's camera. So, 
I'm going to do is I'm going to create a getter for this. So, Alt Shift F, generate kitchen setters. Not set camera, just get camera. And I'll put it at the end. So, yes, once I've initialized everything, then I'll create a projection. And then I'll do transform.set camera to player.getCamera. And considering this is sort of default behavior, did I actually already put that in here? It does not appear so. Well, oh, I do, but more flexible transform class such as default values for projection and camera. Yeah, because, you know, I don't want to have to set that up every single time. And with that, now I've got my camera being controlled by my player. Which is great, that's exactly what I'm looking for. But of course, that's not quite everything, because there's a slight problem I actually sort of glossed over. The player can go up, down, all around, and, you know, I sort of want the player to be at one level, you know? Don't want the player to be able to fly up all over the place, that's not how the game's supposed to be played. So, I'm going to change this a little bit. What I'm going to do is, rather than just having the camera move directly, I'm going to have a private vector 3f just called movement vector. And it's going to be equal to a new vector 3f. Wait, what? No. And every time I start the input, well, I'll do it right here, why not? Movement vector equals new vector 3f 0, 0, 0. So completely new movement vector. And rather than do all this, camera.move stuff, I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to say movement vector plus equals camera.get forward. And oh, right, this isn't C. So movement vector e equals movement vector dot add camera. Whoops. There. And that's sort of what I'm going to just going to do for everything. Just add the direction. Why? What I'm sort of trying to get here, and here I'm going to do sub. What I'm sort of trying to get here is I'm trying to get the actual direction. This will this won't be the right length, but it will be the right direction. And does that doesn't matter because I can just say movement vector equals movement vector dot normalize. And you know, that bothers me. I really think normalization should be some operation on the vector, not something you can get from the vector. So I'll just go ahead and add this, even though we haven't gotten into it too much. And that's, mm, yeah, I'll put leave it here. Just better vector math. So maybe normalization, I'll leave that there for now. Normalization, yeah, there we go. So, there. Now we can... Now we've got some movement vector that's in the direction that we want to move. And now, what I'm going to do is actually, before I normalize it, yes, I'm just going to do movement vector dot set y to zero. So, whatever y movement's there, it's just going to be set to zero. And then I'll do camera dot move and movement vector by whatever the amount is, which is move amount. And in theory, this should work. Let's see what actually happens. So, well actually, first off, let's make... Huh? Oh right, this is that one bug that I completely forgot to address. First off, I'm going to set the player to 0.5f. And right now we see absolutely nothing. Why? Because our vector is at not a number. So what I should say is, hmm, actually, all right. Here what I'm going to do is say if movement vector dot length is greater than zero. So if there is any movement. 
And that's why the reason it's not a number, because if we do normalization, that's going to divide by zero. And that's not good. So I'm going to run. And now, you notice, it's sort of working. Well, actually, it is working. Oh, no. That, oh, right. That bug doesn't happen yet. Never mind. But yeah, so now we're running around the level at one single viewing level. And yeah, we can just run straight through walls and everything, but, you know, it works. We don't have weird movement glitches when we're looking around, so that's good. And yeah, so I guess next topic would be collision detection. But first, let's clean this code up a little bit. Because we are copying temporary code, so yeah. Let's have some values in here. For instance, let's create a private static final float called mouse sensitivity, which I'm going to set equal to 0.5f. And you know, mouse sensitivity sort of sounds like something you'd find in an options menu where you can configure it, because, you know, whatever value I choose, that's not going to be good for everyone. So, maybe some sort of options class slash system to where you can read options values so some place to read values that the player chooses I don't know something like that and yeah so now I'm gonna completely get rid of this and multiply this by mouse sensitivity as for movement amount, I'm going to have some private static final float called move speed, which I'm going to set equal to 10f. I'm just going to replace this 10 with that. Because that way, well, I just have some configurability, I guess, if you want to put it that way, when I have it as constant. Because anything I want to change about the way the player works, and sort of configuration, I can do that. So yeah, now I can change that easily and whatnot. Not until I'm going to use it anywhere else. And one final thing, I'm going to have some private static final vector 3f called 0 vector, which is going to equal a new vector 3f of just all zeros. And that way I don't have to create a new vector every single update, because creating 2,000 vectors objects a second for no good reason, I don't think Java likes that. So. I'm just going to assign it as a zero vector, and it's going to change as necessary. You know, I'm going to add something to the vector math notes. Normalization plus equals. And one more thing is just commonly used vector constants. Because, think about it, how often do you want a vector that's just zero? Quite a bit. How, many, how often do you want a vector that's just one. Also a fair bit. How often do you want a vector that's, say, pointing in s along some axis? Well, I'm using it right here. Wait, not here. What am I saying? I'm using it right here. One along the z-axis, one along the y-axis. So, there should be some vector constants. And with that, I... Yeah. Actually, could I set that to center position? I never thought about that. Yeah, I'm curious. Can I just say set mouse position, center position? I can. Huh. I never knew that. Well, I never tried that more accurately, but yeah. So, with that, that's just about everything I wanted to cover in this video. We've got a player set up. It's not much, but we can move around the level. We're at one height level. And... Mm, you know, it just seems barely too high for me. I don't think the player should be, like, direct eye level with the center of the, the grid, so... One moment. And yeah, after playing around just a little bit, you know, the value is something along the lines of Whoops, I guess I didn't copy that. Let's see, it was 0.4375f. You know, that height just... It seems better to me. I mean, it seems like... 
you know, in comparison, at first, it does seem a little bit... seem like you're a little short, but... Once you get past the initial, oh, it's different than before, it really just makes more sense. It feels like you're in an actual building and not some... You know, it feels better, in my humble opinion. You can set your player to whatever height you want, but after playing around this for a fair bit, I really do like this height. So, yeah. And with that, that really is just about everything I wanted to cover in this video. We've got a player set up, we've got a level set up, and you know, this seems a little redundant. We have sort of everything being input and everything being updated. So maybe we'd have, you know, some centralized class for that in the final engine. Maybe, you know, some class which has all the various data for the game. And it can, we can just call that input and update, and it'll just input and update everything. You know, something along that lines. What I'm getting at is some centralized level class. Some centralized level or scene class. If I can spell it. And that's just going to hold all the data that makes up what the game runs at some point. Which holds that holds the data the game is using. So, you know, it's, again, it's not something that's horrendously apparent right now, but as we move on, the benefits of that will start to become more and more apparent. So, yeah. With that, that's just about everything I wanted to do in this video. So I'll run around the level while I say thank you. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.